management uh, and with a talk from Steve Bohm, uh, who is the chief executive of KM&T, a consultancy, uh, and who has past experience in a wide range of industries, but notably uh, Toyota during the Corolla project. And so he is going to introduce us to Lean and explain it from his perspective. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you. Okay, good, good morning. Uh, just like to give an introduction. My, my background, as I said, was uh, Toyota, so I've worked in industry and then within the last nine years um, within healthcare. Uh, we've worked with uh, UCLH on the outpatients, products of outpatients for Tara and team, and we've just been appointed as your partners to lead on transformation and support you through the next few years. Before I start, I'd just like to introduce Neil Griffiths, who is uh, soon to become Deputy Chief Executive, and we'll be working with Neil closely and Tara and team on, uh, in a partnership on transforming UCLH. Neil, would you? Um, hello, hi, so yeah, Neil Griffiths, that's Deputy Chief Executive of UCLH, not KM&T. Um, uh, so yeah, I've, um, I will start at the Trust on the uh, 2nd of June. Um, uh, some of you will know me before. I, I worked at uh, UCLH about six years or so ago uh, doing uh, you know, various different things, uh, but one of which was the Director of Strategic Development. Um, what have I been doing for the last sort of six years or so? Um, I spent a couple of years running sort of private hospitals, but the last four years um, uh, I've been at McKinsey, um, uh, leading the development of the McKinsey Hospital Institute. And actually what we've been doing is working with uh, a number of hospitals about how they approach transformation, manage change. Um, uh, so I bring all that sort of experience. And I'm really looking forward to getting back uh, and working with you and the Trust uh, and starting on the, the 2nd of June. And this is a great event for me to be able to sit and listen and sort of reconnect with people. So I'll speak to you all a bit later. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I, I've got 20 minutes or 15 now to uh, try and do 70 years of innovation and 70 years of industry learning around this lean and transformation space. So we've heard a lot this morning around transformation and the use of innovation and technology. Um, centred around the patient, as some of the guest speakers previously have mentioned. Really, this all needs to be put into some context with process as well. So technology and innovation will only work where there's good process, good information and good data centred around patients. So my job this morning is to try and uh, show you some of the process benefits that we can bring. So evolution and change within the NHS. Well, some have described the NHS previously as maybe looking like this, and this is not dissimilar to business as well. So very, very complicated processes that have evolved over time points of excellence within them, and usually at the point of care or the point of treatment, very good interaction with the patient, but not across the whole system or pathway. So what we're actually trying to do from a process point of view is strip that back and really understand and be able to visualise the process, the value within the process, the interaction points with the patient, families, carers, across the whole pathway from commissioning all the way through primary care, through the acute and out to the tertiary community services. This doesn't always happen perfectly, so lean is a good way to visualise and start to uh, work on transformation within these pathways. The NHS in particular over the last uh, six years has gone from point interventions. So point projects, as you can see on the top corner, rapid improvement events, or let's fix things that we think are broken, or if we're having trouble discharging, let's fix pharmacy because it must be TTO issues, etc., to more of a pathway or specialty-based approach. In recent years, over the last 18 months, people have moved towards a cross-divisional, cross-specialty, and, and more of a 2D matrix around pathway and full system. And where we need to go to in the future is the kind of 3D model, which is how do we integrate technology into the pathway and take the view of the patient. In industry, we talk about voice of the business and voice of the customer. And in, in the patient's case, we don't often talk about voice of the patient and what's important to the patient, what do they need to know, when and how, and then how do we design a process around that and automate that process using technology as we've seen this morning. It's not all bad news. This is a recent HSJ article uh, showing that there is, despite the, the investment through the Blair era and the last 10 years of labor, uh, over the last two years in particular, signs of productivity increase. So we are getting it right. Unfortunately, good news doesn't travel that far. Bad news travels far quickly in the media. So there are great areas of excellence within the NHS uh, that we can all learn from and wider as we've seen this morning across the globe. So how do we relate what's happened in industry to what's happening in the NHS? Well, as you've seen this morning, there's some great technology and some great applications, some great uh, innovations. This is a slide uh, not necessarily designed to demonstrate that, but some of our innovations are around economics, some are around morally-led environment, some are around consumer. The ones on the far side of the screen are really the ones that we're talking about. So needs-led needs 
or business-led or innovation-led. So, for example, the bottom corner is uh, an A380. I, I threw back on the A380 on Saturday from Australia. And whilst I was flying, watching the videos, trying to get some sleep for my 14-hour uh, journey, being entertained as a customer, not a patient in that case, for 14 hours, but it's very similar, the whole plane and the engines and the infrastructure behind that aircraft uh, is, is immense, something you don't view as a customer. So the engines are being monitored every second of their journey and things are being adjusted for fuel to make them the most efficient, for temperature to make sure that the aircraft is the most efficient, safe and economic along its journey, uh, as well as all of the flight systems, as well as all the safety systems. So again, we can learn a lot from industry that have been doing this for 10, 20 years around monitoring real-time data to make real-time decisions with data, not necessarily just opinion. The automotive sector uh, is, is one of the fast-moving and, and more cutthroat uh, industries, and hence my background, uh, quite <coughs> versed to talk about it. It hasn't always been easy. So again, technology has progressed massively from the first cars to what we're now seeing in, in the future. Again, cars are monitoring themselves for service conditions, safety conditions, to protect the, the user or the customer inside. But the problem with the automotive industry, as with healthcare, is they've suffered from a massive um, overcapacity. So huge investment throughout the 70s and 80s, huge is issues around unionization, and huge problems along the way in terms of economic, 9-11, uh, the GFC more recently in 2008. Well, you can align that very similarly to what the NHS is facing currently. So we want better processes, better clinical outcomes in a shorter time uh, to the better standard of quality, safety uh, and quality as a patient, but the system needs it for less money or wants it for less cost. So how do we match what the customer or the patient in this case wants, what the system wants and the stakeholders want with what's affordable and, how, and what processes do we need to design to make that a reality? If you look back across transformational lean, I'm not going to take you through the history, but it's evolved, and it's evolved over a collection of best practices for many, many years. So it isn't a single model that's going to change the world. It is a collection of best practices, uh, predominantly pioneered and, and taken forward by Toyota, but learning and benchmarking and taking best practice from all industries, all sectors. Kevin mentioned earlier NASA. Uh, when I was an engineer for Toyota, even though it was a, a Corolla model, which is a fairly bland car, uh, normally offend some people at, at this point in the audience, but um, we were learning from people like NASA. We were learning from people in Formula One. What's the latest technology? What's the latest um, way of putting parts together? What's the latest use of components? And there's huge innovations as there are in NHS, in industry at the minute, with this uh, latest 3D um, modeling and 3D part production, which again is going to save huge amounts of time and cost for uh, aerospace, automotive, and, and other industries as well. So technology is a real driver, but we have to harness and use technology properly in the right way and not waste uh, lots of time and investment. Deming uh, was very instrumental in forming Toyota's opinion uh, and in particular looking at quality and how they maximise their quality. And this statement has been true in industry for years. So uh, it is not necessary to change and survival is not mandatory. We're starting to see this, this type of thinking come through to the NHS now over the last kind of 12, 18 months as well. So how have Toyota done it? Well, Lean is not a word that Toyota recognised. Lean or transformation is a word that the, the industry has badged uh, learning from Toyota and studying Toyota. Toyota are all about quality, reliability, flexibility and agility and safety at all costs. So that is how their business on a global basis has been designed around those things. Number one for quality and safety. Number one for reliability. Having the flexibility in your business model to be able to predict and understand what your customer wants, what the market trends are, and having the agility to be able to re react in real time without losing too much time, too much cost, too much money, or too many customers in their case. That is what they call the Toyota way. The Western world and the professors that have studied Toyota call it lean or transformation. They don't recognize that term. When you dig a bit deeper into their uh, business model and what it means, it's based around two things, people and process. So it's based on having mutual trust and respect for people, suppliers, partners, respect for colleagues and teamwork, something that the NHS is definitely not short of. So Toyota runs a very, very tight uh, business, uh, business model with very few people, very short hierarchy. But the teamwork is like nothing I've ever seen before in any other business around the world. 
They also strive for this thing called continuous improvement. So how do we improve day to day on a micro, tiny incremental way? So as an engineer, my job every day was to see how we could save half a second here, half a second there. Could we improve safety by one accident or near miss here, one accident or near miss there? And we were improving the business in tiny, micro, incremental ways every day of the week. And everybody, through teamwork and empowerment, a very overused word in the Western world, were empowered to make change within their sphere of responsibility or within their team or within their area. So it's how do we get a culture in the NHS and in UCLH in particular of continuous improvement. And there's obviously some big things that need to change before we get to that uh, evolution or that point. But how do we make it everybody's responsibility across the whole hierarchy, across the whole spectrum and pathway to improve what we do for the patient and for the staff on a day-to-day -day basis? As a result, Toyota are one of the most profitable businesses in the world and have been for many, many years. A uh, slight blip through the GFC and a slight blip through re, uh, recall due to uh, quality issues. But if you compare that to their competitors and the red bar charts, uh, because of overcapacity and because of just producing what they thought was right for the market, not what their customers actually wanted, uh, they've made huge losses for years before restructuring post-recession. Post Toyota are hugely profitable. But they're not just profitable, they are the number one manufacturer in the world for safety, quality, all of the accolades, all of the um, accreditations and things that go with that and for customer surveys as well, which is more important to them than anything else. What do our customers value? What do we do? And what do we manage and give to our customers? So how do we translate that into healthcare and some of the learnings from industry that we, we previously mentioned? Well, one of the issues with healthcare is we vertically managed the NHS for years. So we've managed it through directorates, divisions, and now CBUs, uh, et cetera. But patients go through the process horizontally through pathways. And as we put the 3D model before, how do we then extend that with collaboration partnerships, working in partner with uh, the commissioners, the GPs, the primary care, as well as the, the social care at the, at the back end? So how do we really visualize and manage end-to-end -end processes for patients? So that's one of the first uh, things to do. The NHS has traditionally, because of the cost tar targets, gone for cost cutting, which is uh, good. We can reduce waste, we can improve quality, and we can maximize some of the opportunities that are local to us move towards a more of a model of service redesign, so standardised processes, looking at end-to-end -end flow, looking at new ways of working, looking at innovation technology, but really not made the leap towards transformation. And it's the leap towards transformation, which is the partnerships, appropriate care at the right time for the right patient, and whole system alignment. And when you look at transformation in the dictionary, it actually says it's a marked improvement for the better. So it's how do we make a marked improvement back to the continuous improvement philosophy. If you graph that, it actually looks more like this. We, we've run CIPs for years. We, now need, we are now starting to move from CIPs into CIPs in transformation. But really where we need to be is thinking, reducing the number of CIPs, going for real transformational change, and then starting to think radically. And you've seen some of the radical examples this morning of, of use of technology to make things uh, more automated and, and improve things to a new level. And once we've got control of our house, and once we've got control of the hospital, the trust, the patients, the pathways, the staff, we can then start to look for this dirty word in the NHS at the minute, but additional income. So what are the opportunities to us? And they may not be just in this region. They may be nationally. They may be globally. They may be internationally. All of this is not possible without the people. So going back to the Toyota philosophy of people and process. So we can design great processes, but we need great people and leaders to manage processes and manage people and manage innovation and ideas. And in a lean sense, we talk about the transition from uh, top-down management and inverting the triangle. So we, we put the patient or the staff at the top, and everybody in the management structure is there to support the staff who has the interaction all the closest time, all the time with the patient. So how do we change the, the hierarchy there? That obviously extends out to commissioning and obviously politics within, within the NHS as well. How do we change the mindset of what has been done to us or done with us for years to one of a more forward-thinking uh, organisational strategy. So how do we translate that into UCLH? Well, I believe your ambition is to become world-class and an exemplar. Uh, and I believe you're halfway there, or more than halfway there, when you talk to Robert. Um, you've got some great accolades, you've got some great things going on, you're in a great position with a great brand, great reputation, some great clinical interventions, some great research. 
but we need to maintain the current performance and push it on to the next level to become truly exemplar in the day-to-day -day processes, which then give you the, the accolade and the performance and the bedrock to then be able to innovate and try things and generate surplus cash to try even more things, etc. So I think the, the message would be continue to do what you do, but let's try and incrementally do it better every day and then look for what are the big bang items that are really going to make UCLH stand out from, from the crowd. Thank you.